Afternoon folks and welcome back for another video and today we are going to take a look at uh, the latest project which is, just turn it around, a junk box oxal valve based TRF and I'll show you how to build one of these, very simple and uh, works well reasonably okay given how simple it is so without further ado, let's um, have a look at the circuit diagram and we'll show you what it's all about. Okay folks, this is the <clears throat> circuit diagram of the TRF that I put together. And I got this circuit diagram uh, from the Denko Coil data sheets. Now, for those not familiar with Denko Coils, uh, they were quite popular during the 60s and 70s as a way or a means for radio amateurs to build uh, radio receiver projects and what they were were a whole range or series of uh, coils um, which were pre-wound pre uh, which you could then use to either to build a transistorized radio either a TRF or even a superhet and you had different uh, coils for uh, transistorized uh, radios. Obviously, they're slightly different from the ones used for valve radios. And the advantage of these coils was that they were sort of pre-wound, because that's always the bugbear when you build a receiver. You've got to wind the coils, and if you're building a complicated receiver, then, you know, you want to... It's very handy to have the coils pre-wound, so that's what Denko did, and these coils were really good because they sort of fitted a B9 or a B7 uh, valve bay, so you could literally just plug them in. Um, so yeah, so this um, circuit was one of the circuits suggested by Denko using uh, some of their coils. Now I have got some Denko coils uh, lying around in the shack, but uh, what I did is I used this circuit because the principles are the same for building a TRF receiver <clears throat> and the valves that they've suggested are some of the ones that I've uh, used or something very similar anyway. So if you look at V1 on this circuit diagram that's actually the RF stage and the coil there uh, I've managed to sort of, I've managed basically to, to wind myself um, using some uh, plug-in octal coils because the, the whole idea of this TRF was to use octal valve bases or sort of make it a, an octal an octal mania receiver so to speak so the so V1 uh, is a uh, 6SK7 uh, <clears throat> is a uh, pentode or a 6SG7 you can use either or they're, they're pretty similar and the more RF stages you have on a TRF the better selectivity you've got. Uh, so I've just gone for this single three valve design. I've got a, um, a 6SG7 or 6SK7, I can't remember which one it was, um, in the front end for the RF stage. And then you've got the second coil there where you've got three windings, which is basically um, <clears throat> your reactance coil. Uh, so you've got uh, a winding there, which is basically it's the frequency of what you want to receive and you've got a link coil which links the RF stage and then you've got a reactance winding now those the reactance winding and the coupling windings are usually well I would say 10 or 15 percent of the um, the main uh, winding that it, that the receiver is designed for and then following that you've got uh, your reactants um, tube. Now you, uh, on this circuit they've got V2 as a triode and I actually used a, um, a, <clears throat> a uh, I think it was a pentode, a 6SG7. Again you can use 6SK7 there. And you'll notice that they've got R5 there so that basically is your reactants control which you have to twiddle to sort to receive uh, whatever station you're trying to listen to, and then the last stage is your audio stage, and I've used a six v six, um, an output the output transformer there, which they've got um, in series with the anode a v three. 
is a standard um, uh, output transformer, which I actually managed to get from RS. So uh, cause sometimes these output, old school output transformers, um, you can get from old uh, valve receivers, uh, but you can also, but RS actually do um, a new uh, output transformers uh, designed for this sort of thing. And uh, they're not that expensive. I think I paid about 10 or 13 quid for it. Uh, so it's not too bad. So there we have the circuit. And I said it's a quite a standard circuit. Um, and you can you can actually build one of these. You don't have to use uh, the valves they suggest there. I mean, you can use it with sort of like the smaller um, <clears throat> seven pin valves. Um, and it will and it will probably work just fine. Uh, but I, I've gone for the Oxal valves uh, just for the um, well, just because that's what they've they, the, the valves they've suggested there are sort of similar to the type of thing that um, <clears throat> you know that that uh, that I've got in this in this receiver. So there we are. So let's have a quick look at it in uh, a bit more detail. So here's the front panel folks and uh, it was it was knocked up uh, fairly quickly as you can see the uh, the edge there's a bit uh, not quite straight I haven't got a laser cutter unfortunately but um, if anybody's got one uh, always happy for a donation um, but anyway um, yeah so it's um, quite standard construction aluminium um, sheet and we've got uh, a few controls there at the front so that's our RF gain, and uh, that's obviously the main tuning dial. And this is my fine tuning. And then down here, I should actually label all these, but I haven't done yet. Uh, that's my volume control, and that is our reactance control. And then we've got obviously power switch and the speaker. So it's all very uh, simple. What we'll do is have a quick look at the uh, the top and the bottom of it. So I'm going to just reposition my camera so that you can get a, uh, a better view of it. Well I hope you can see that reasonably clearly. This is obviously the uh, top of the chassis and just to take you through a few things. So that's our main tuning capacitor and uh, this was the only one I had this is real a real junk box receiver. I mean, all these bits here is just you know what I had available, and uh, so that's the fine tuning. So this valve here is the RF amplifier, the RF stage, and uh, it was originally a 6SK7. I'm pretty sure of that, but I've changed it to a 6SG7, uh, which I think worked slightly better. That's our aerial coil, and then. Obviously the one here is the reactance coil and our the reactance valve is a 6SG7 and our 6V6 workhorse audio uh, <coughs> tetrode, tetrode, pen tetrode and uh, that's that audio out output transformer I was telling you about and a small 3 watt speaker, you don't really need much more than that actually, uh, it produces pretty good audio just as it is there. Uh, just a couple of things to know. If you're planning to build one of these, they're dead easy to build. Um, so if you if you want to get into shortwave listening and you know you want to have a go, just a few points to um, help you along the way if you want to build a thing, something like this. First of all, you have to make sure that these coils are screened. That hence these baffles here, these aluminium sheets. So you've got to make sure that the RF stage is uh, screened from the uh, reactant stage. Otherwise, you're going to get um, sort of howling and whistling and interference and feedback and all the rest of it so that's quite an important thing to remember uh, and similarly what I've done there is also screened off the audio section uh, these one of the things about using octal tubes especially these sort of things is that because they've got a metal can uh, that also helps the screening as well uh, I'm sure it will work pretty okay if you use miniature valves but um, it's kind of like it sort of helps, you know, if you use uh, metal screw, metal uh, tubes. Just to show you underneath, not, as I said, not not an awful lot to it. 
so that's my power transformer uh, I haven't got a choke um, <clears throat> didn't have much space to put a choke on actually um, the only thing is with this it does pick up hum you'll hear the I mean it's not the hums not a problem when you tuned into a station but there is hum and I suspect it's probably because that um, power transformer is underneath the chassis uh, so again something to be aware of probably would have best if that was on the other side uh, but uh, but anyway it is what it is as they say and um, yeah pretty standard construction really using uh, tag strip um, I did when I first built this thing I actually had quite a bit of hum and I um I think I can remember I think I put it one of these uh, electrolytics in the uh, in the audio line somewhere and uh, a thing on the power line supplying the audio and that made a big difference so uh, something to be aware of probably should have put that on the chassis actually but uh, I was a bit short of space uh, anyway you live and learn I guess so that's the construction very simple nothing much to it so the next question is uh, let's see what it sounds like see if we can tune up some stations That's uh, Paul M1 PVC on the morning net on AM 3615. Coming through quite well, actually. And, um, it certainly, uh, as I took the, uh, With a TRF, what you find is that you, you, you sort of set it more or less where the frequency or the station is that you want to listen to, and you just sort of tweak it with the regen and um, the RF gain, which is what I'm using here. It's just just a slight tweak there, and you know you move it moves off frequency. Just tune it to a bit of uh, SSB. This is a bit of SSB, but it's it's really difficult to try and resolve it. That's probably about as best as I can get, and even then, it's not very intelligible.
There we go, I've just managed to resolve that station, but it's very difficult with SSB. So there we go, that's my TRF receiver, very basic. Uh, it does work, it will receive AM, it will receive SSB with uh, a little bit of difficulty, but it can do it. And uh, yeah, there we have it. Anyway, till next time, thanks for watching.